Most of the gang is here. My name's BG, that's JB right there. He's my co-host for today. Avery, Xavier, Mark, I appreciate you guys doing this. I had just asked him uh, how his day was going, if he could properly introduce himself, but Xavier and Avery, could you do the same? Just please properly introduce yourself. Let us know whereabouts you are right now and plug or promote anything you'd like. All right, yeah, no, Avery here, vocals for Mira Lake. I'm just kicking it at home, chilling. Uh, Every one of my socials is the same. It's just at the Avery Clay. I heard him plug in his earlier. I was in the Twitch stream talking shit. So okay. that's me commenting, being an asshole. Yeah. <laughs> Got you. <laughs> what about yourself, Xavier? How you doing? So I'm doing good. Had a pretty easy day. And same thing. All, all, all my uh, tags, my Twitch is Ambriel underscore six. And same thing on Instagram. Everything's under Ambriel on all my socials. But yeah, today's been chill. Today's been chill, man. Hell yeah. We first heard about you guys, obviously, from the show No Cover from Sumerian. Uh, I do want to ask some questions about that. But before we get started, I want to know a little bit more about the band. How long have you guys been together? Were you in, 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 were you in any previous projects with each other before joining Mirror Lake? Let's kind of just start there. Yeah, actually, uh, so... We've been in well, multiple bands, I guess. They were in bands together, and then me and the guys have been in bands together. So I don't know. Mark can explain that probably better than me because I wasn't in all the bands. <laughs> yeah, we've been in uh, – Xavier and I and Avery and I have uh, both been in separate different bands. Um, so that's where I have history with Xavier and Avery as well. Uh, did you want me to plug in those bands, or did you want me to just speak of, I guess, the are, genre? Do they still exist, or those are not active right now? Uh, I would say they're not really active right now. It's kind of just like an on and off thing, you know? Is is everyone from Houston originally, or did you guys move there for, for music reasons or, or some other reason? Uh, no, we're all... I was people. actually... Uh, yeah. I was born oh, in New York. Xavier, but... yeah. <laughs> yeah. Born in New York? Did you move to, to Houston to, yeah. to make music or just for, for other reasons? No, I, I, I wish it was uh, cooler than that. I guess uh, I just moved down here. My uh, my pops and my mom decided to move down here. So I guess shout out to them because without that move, it would have been a little different. <laughs> cool. Hell yeah. Uh, so talking about, about No Cover, I think that you guys are like the sixth or seventh band we've had uh, a chance to interview from the show. How was your experience would you do it again? And third part is, would, would you say that successfully you've seen an increase in numbers post-show? Definitely. I definitely say that we have seen a lot more of an increase in just, I mean, talking to new people and like a lot more interaction. And uh, of course, yeah, the numbers look great, you know, but it's... Um, would we do it again? That's a tough question. That's a tough question. I mean, Shit, I, would. I don't know. I don't. Yeah, I was like, I don't know if I'd want to go do it again. But I think if I could redo the first time, I would have done a lot differently. But uh, doing it again, I can't really say either which way. It was a good experience, though. I will say that. Like, um, just everything that the judges had to say to us was like pivotal in our growing as a band from that point forward. Hell yeah. Uh, do, are you still in contact with, with Ash and Sumerian? Like, have they, have they kind of, even though you guys weren't, weren't champions, have they been like, Hey, we still want to help you do this, do this. We might know a guy to help in this little tiny situation. Do, or is that kind of like it was over when it was over? We don't have any communication with them anymore. No, I still have communication with like, we, we still will talk to Ash, Ash, you know, he checks up and he's like, you know, following us, he's paying attention to our releases and stuff like that. So that's really cool. And like, he, and honestly in California, he was just a really all around chill guy. So we all got to know him a little bit. Hell yeah, excellent. Well, let's play some of your tunes. Some people in the chat might not know what you guys sound like. Let's get them familiar. Let's play Bury You. But a Avery, first tell me what Bury You is about from a lyrical perspective. A lyrical perspective. So uh, like basically it's just, about me and my own fucking <laughs> problems with uh people not just like real like romantic relationships but my friendships and things were suffering 
because of my own mental health. Like I was just like really depressed and I was like going through it and it was like taking its toll on every relationship in my life. And this was kind of my like almost apology for being the way that I am. Sometimes you just got to get it out through the music, right? You just got to, there's no other oh, way yeah, besides just. And, I mean, and I listen to it now. I'm in, I'm in such a, a better headspace nowadays. Like when I wrote that, I was just in a, a terrible place. And so like, it's, it's cool to listen to it now because I'm definitely in a more positive place in my life. But like at that point, I was just like, I'm so sorry to everybody that I'm just like bailing on people. I'm not answering messages. I'm like being fucking super shifty. <laughs> but yeah, no, it's it's a good song though, and I I feel that every time I sing it, so that's really neat. Let's jam. Let's check it out. We're hanging out with Barry Mirror Lake, and this is Barry. You, who'd you guys go do for for the audio production? Uh, in house actually. Uh, really? Yeah. So uh, we we record all of our own. Well, we went to a producer for the new stuff that we're getting ready to put out, but from everything. Up to now, we've recorded at home ourselves. And, and you do all the mixing and mastering and everything? Yeah, everything. Wow, that too, is actually. impressive. Wow. <laughs> Kudos to you guys. That is amazing. What what DAW uh, system do you use to record? Pro Tools. Pro Tools. Excellent. Fant yep. Fantastic. JB, do you have a question for, for anybody in the band? Yo. So taking losing my religion as a, a cover, you guys made it so amazing. How, how does it feel being able to make such an impact with that song? You know, OK, so that that song is like such a fun story to tell because we I talked about doing that cover for a really long time. And then like one day we're like, yeah, let's do it, whatever. Knocked it out in like 20 minutes. Didn't think anybody would really care. And now it's got like over a million streams on Spotify. People How talk crazy. about it all the time. We were like, yeah, like, I mean, we, we love the song. We love the original. So we were like, yeah, let's do it. And then all of a sudden, boom, people were like, this is awesome. And I was like, what? So it was like, it was a complete shock to us. We were so pleasantly surprised. Was Definitely. There any... Ari... I'm sorry, JB. No, you're good. Was there any other songs that almost got covered from, uh, from another artist, but they were just ruled out? we got like a whole folder it's got like i think five or six covers just sitting in the in the band folder that are just unreleased what are you guys waiting on it, feed it's us in the books it's in the books <laughs> they're, gonna, they're gonna yeah I, I have a feeling they're gonna see the light of day for sure cool very cool there, there's, there's a certain hotel we gotta go to <laughs> no i don't want to plug oh if if someone had never heard your band and you just had a pair of headphones and you were like, hey, check this out, can't be it can't be bear you because we've already played it. But what what one song would you play in the headphones for someone that never had heard your band before? I want to jam Man, whatever song uh, that is. I mean, me personally, it's unspoken. realistically, yeah, I was gonna say probably unspoken. That's a cool one to to show people because it's a little more upbeat. It's a neat song. What what would you say, Xavier? I would say unspoken too, because it's like uh, losing my religion is not an original, but that one's it's it's still a jam. But I think unspoken is definitely like uh, it just hits you. It was that perfect end song for the set. That one just it's it's dynamic. So I would show people that one for sure. Avery, in the thumbnail, it looks like you're blowing out some sweet, sweet Chiba. Smoke weed every day. Is that indica, sativa, or hybrid? Yeah. You're blowing out right there. <laughs> I think, I think we did that after the filming. <laughs> <laughs> let's check it out. Let's check out Unspoken. Okay. Avery, let's rewind to, to, to your yay high way back in the day, way back. Who, way back. Who, are you, who are you jamming out that makes you want to go, I can do that. I want to be like that artist. I want to do vocals like this artist. Who, who is your big influence when you were young? Okay, so here, it's, 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 it's as backwards, because what happened was is I actually, I grew up singing my whole life, and I was just bored of it. I wanted to start a band so that I could be a screamer, but then I found out I'm a garbage fucking screamer, so I went back to singing. So I would say initially, I was listening to a lot of like, just like really like heavy metal or like black metal and stuff like that, and then... I got into like Bullet for my Valentine and all this stuff because that's what my neighbor was listening to. 
And that's actually how I met Mark because he's like, yeah, I'm gonna bring my friend over. And then boom, Mark shows up. And then we just started like doing bullet covers in the garage. And that was like, oh my God, years ago. Dude, I remember. What were you like, 13, Mark? (laughs) Yeah, this shit had us geeked out. I remember going to the Warp Tour many years ago, and the free CD they handed you when you leave the Warp Tour was like a compilation, and Bullet for My Valentine was on it. I never heard of them before, and that was my Hand of Blood was my favorite song on the whole compilation. (laughs) That was my favorite one. So good. I jammed it so many times. Mark and Xavier, same question as far as just back in the day, someone that made you, influenced you to pick up your instrument. I would say when I was like real, real young, my like, I think one of the earliest memories of like being introduced to that, I had a a uncle that moved in from Florida and he had like some snowmobile game on like PS2 or some shit. And I remember hearing Rob Zombie on that. And I was like, what the fuck? I was real young. So I was like, this is fucking bonkers. Like, what is this? And then I think what really, I guess when I was like, this is what I need to do for a living was Bulletproof Valentine was probably that band that was just like, okay, this is what, fuck everything else, I need to be doing what these guys are fucking doing. Good answer. I want to branch off of that and say Bullet, but honestly, um, I would say, I just remember riding in my grandfather's minivan and uh, with the visors, if you pull it down, he had one of those uh, CD holders that just held the CDs in the slots. Yeah, and I used to pull out this one album specifically, and it was from Carlos Santana, and it was a Supernatural album. Oh, and that's so old. we would just listen to that front to back. And after that, I stumbled upon Nirvana, and that kind of like gave me like more of that angsty, that idea of what an angsty style of music would be. But then I turned to Bullet, and then that kind of just like skyrocketed everything. Tell me, tell me the worst show. Mirror Lake has ever played. Everything went wrong at this show. <laughs> it happens to every band, so tell me the worst one. We about to, we about to throw some motherfuckers under the bus. <laughs> I, I, I feel like I almost put my beer out. The, uh, the the buzz, the St. Patty's Day show, but I guess when we were when we were on no cover. I guess like it wasn't necessarily a bad because we bounced back, but uh, right before we're about to play, so, you know, we're uh, in front of Alice Cooper, we're in front of all these like, like superstars, and Brian goes to set up his, the, the the rig, the backtrack rig, and just he forgot all the cables, he forgot everything, so we almost <laughs> didn't even get to perform. So what happened? We ended up, we ended up finding. He just left it at like the hotel, and the, we ended up they ended up finding the cable that we needed. That it was like connected to a printer that was like somewhere in some office upstairs or something. Like we got that was like one of those like borderline disasters. Like I mean, it was a disaster. that was happening. I was so stressed. I was calm. Oh, <laughs> like, that, that is crazy. I was not calm at all. So like, a minute before silent, you're like, oh, no we got bad. it. The producers are looking around like, what's going on? Are we ready to tape? Are we filming? What's going on? You're like, I got it. I got this printer cable. Hell yeah. Save the day. Well done. Uh, Let's see. Do you guys play any video games? What do you do in your spare time when you're not working on music? Mm -hmm. Any video games, hobbies? What do you you nerd out to? I think we all play games, right? Mm -hmm. I know exactly. I have a... I my War, Warzone has consumed my life, but I've 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 definitely I'm, I'm winging myself off. Like I'm 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 being more productive a lot lately, but that game has me in a yeah. fucking chokehold. It has <laughs> since COVID started. It's like two years of chokehold from Activision. Warzone Two's coming. <laughs> I've personally strayed away from video bring games. You right back I actually in. have to sell my console. I it's... sold my console just because I was just indulging in it so often and since then i've actually been more focused on my craft and just appreciating guitar for what it is good for you but if i if i do play video games um i play apex yeah since it's been on mobile i have the accessibility to it and it's pretty badass to be honest 
So I'm like a full nerd. I play Elder Scrolls online, but like religiously, like I'm like a high champion point level player. And I died and played on that at all. I got a whole addiction and it consumes my wallet and my life. I feel you. I, I spent many years on Skyrim and Fallout and a couple other ones, but uh, I never really got oh, into yeah. the online one, but definitely MMO RPG style games for sure. I play a lot of those. That's my favorite, yeah. If uh, if all of a sudden you guys are going on a world tour, you can, and let's just say it's like a sixty country world tour. What one country are you circling on your calendar as this one I'm most excited to play? Australia. Australia, good answer. That is an easy mm -hmm. answer. We have like we've got like a handful of I'm talking like OG fans out there, and I don't know how the music got out there so quickly, but I guess you know the internet, but. It's just really that, cool because like people are like, come to Australia, come to Australia. I'm like, I'm hearing that oddly, like often. Haven't we had Australian country. fans even get tattoos? Yeah, yeah. And I've sent That's a lot of merch crazy. to Australia. That's like, crazy. Yeah. Like over the years, I've sent a lot. And it's like, I literally, I charge them American shipping because I think that's so cool. I'm like, I will literally pay the difference. I got you. That is wicked cool. Xavier, would you, would you agree or you got a different country in mind? Yeah, I just I love places and like in England and shit. I just love like the I love how people go. Like I I went to go see a show over there and I just think it's cool because they you know they have like the train system. So it's like you have so many countries come to to one show. But I think I I think it have to be Japan probably would be like bro like yeah. playing Japan would just be one of those like I can't I can't even fathom. Because I just love like. Anything you see online about like how their like that culture is towards music is just so like appreciative. Like your scene is just fucking sick, man. Is there is there an artist that you guys have wanted to collab with? It doesn't necessarily have to be a vocalist. It could be just a solo, gu crazy guitar solo or something. But maybe uh, someone you've wanted to collab with just hasn't worked out yet. Oh hmm. man. I would say, like, I guess, like, we're really, like, melodic and stuff. So, like, for me, what I think would be cool is to have someone from, like, the heavier end of the spectrum and collab with, like, a heavier band and, like, do some, like, hard-ass shit. That'd be tight. Get all the nasty screams in there. Yeah, yeah. the stuff I can't do. That's why I gave up on that. <laughs> Hell, yeah. JB, do you have do you have another one for him? Starting, you know, starting as a small band and getting to where you you are now. Um, what is what is the the most memorable thing on, along the path that you guys ha have ever you know experienced, other than you know going on the show? I don't know if I'm allowed to say. I'm gonna say it anyway. They were gonna get mad. Anyway, uh, we were, uh, I think one of the most memorable moments, like, coming up was when we went to Colorado and played a show in Denver for the first time, mm -hmm. and um, we, after the show, we were, like, parked out in the middle of Colorado somewhere, and we were like, okay, it's, it's legal out here, let's go find some smoke, and then, like, we are like, we'll park here, and then we'll find a dispensary, we'll map it, and we park under this green light, and we realize we're, like, at the bottom of a hill, and at the top of the hill, there's this, like, massive dispensary, and I just remember, like, 30 minutes later, Xavier is just in the back of the fucking van, rolling joints, and, like, like a little kid in a sweatshop, and it just made me <laughs> laugh so fucking hard, and I was like, this is the life, bro. <laughs> hell yeah. Give me a hell yeah! Are you guys indica, sativa, or hybrid? What's your preference? Mm. Honestly, I don't know. I like I something just, that's an upper, but I like to just get high. Yeah, I really have, like, a super big preference, to be honest. Like, I'll mostly what I've been, like, when I do smoke, like, recently it's all been hybrid, but, like, I don't have, like, a super hard preference. I'm not going to be like, oh, no. This yeah, I would say hybrid. <laughs> that's cool. I dig it. I bet uh, for sure. Is there is there another Houston local band that you guys are really feeling that we should check out? Maybe somebody we've never heard of before. Uh man. I mean there's a there's a bunch of, of really good bands out here. Really. Um I think personally, like I've got my friends, they're in a band called Apotheca, and then there's like my my boys in From Joy. From Joy, they're a super cool band. Um, 
and that's got one of my friends in it as well. There go Lucy. So you guys have played a bunch of shows with Apotheca before. Yeah. Uh, we've played, you would, it's been a while, but yeah, we have. Heck yeah. On, on, the, on the heavier side, shows. Oh. I was gonna say on, on the heavier side, God Hand is fucking. They're Ooh, killing it right yeah, now, man. God they're Hand fucking, is, so God Hand is killing it. God Hand is crushing it right now. Let's check. Yeah, that's heavy. I can dig it for sure. Uh, we've yeah, got. Yeah. And they, I mean, and do they sound just like that live too? Like they kill it. Like it is like spot on. Also, Diosa. Diosa. Those guys. Oh yeah, Diosa. Those, those guys, guys are wrecking really it. Awesome. They no, just talking about. Some heat. Name dropping a lot of the homies. Artists. I love it. Yeah. Uh, what's what do you guys have? Crazy. It's got a good uh, metal scene. It seems like it for sure. What uh what yeah. what what do you guys have lined up the rest of 2022 that you're allowed to tell us about? I know there's a lot of times there's stuff that's <laughs> secretive. That we can't can't drop all the jewels. But what are you allowed to tell us that either the end of this year or beginning of next year that we can expect? We just got our mixes back for our first collaborative body of work. Excellent. So we've been putting out singles since the beginning of the band. So this is like the first time we're going to put out a full body of work. And so we've got the mixes back. So I guess like soon you guys are going to start seeing that. And yes, the song that we performed on No Cover is one of those songs, Somber. So Hell yeah. Very cool. Uh, I do want to ask uh, a final serious question before I do. JB, final question for the band. Besides music, what is a hobby that you guys uh, love to spend time with? Cooking. Like, I got this whole thing recently where I just, like, I, I fucking went deep in, like, culinary and shit, and I just started, like, learning how to cook all these different dishes from like around the world and shit. So I've really been like in the kitchen, whipping it up, cooking up, doping the- Master, Master anyway. Chef Clay. Master Chef Clay. Yeah, Master <laughs> Chef Clay. Trying, <laughs> nah, <laughs> trying, but yeah, that's probably it for me. What about you, Mark? That's a great question. <laughs> no, cause all I've been doing is playing guitar and um, actually just working on mental health. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, that's like a very important one, just, you know, to find clarity and continue mirror like for what it is, because I mean, that's that's all I'm trying to do, honestly. Yeah. Dig it. What about you, Xavier? I would say hobbies outside of the band. I really like like cinematography. I just want to like double up on that, too, because that's been some like as far as like the mental health thing, like that's something I definitely wish was like more widely spoke about. I'm really like you have people like Patty the Batty, you know, on big platforms, you know, <laughs> really talking about more, which I think is really cool. But I think that's something like a lot lately I've been trying to focus on is just work on myself, you know, like mentally to get ready and I, so I can be more put more into Mirror Lake. You know, I can be the best me that my friends, my bandmates need me to be. So I would say, I don't know if it's like a hobby, but it's definitely like a everyday thing. So I guess you could put it there. More people should, I guess, pick it up as like a, I guess, quote unquote hobby. Just become the best you you possibly can be or the healthiest you you can be. Make have yourself a, happy, you know? Have at least one Zen moment a day where you just just relax and clear your head of, of everything, kind of, essentially. Exactly. It, it helps. Exactly. It helps. Final question I have for you guys, and we'll let you go. I appreciate you doing this. This is a serious question, though. We ask everybody on the show this final question here. What is a piece of musical advice somebody in the industry has given you that you're willing to share that was kind of like an eye-opener, made you take your career a little more serious, or a terrible mistake you made early on in your musical career that you don't want a starting up garage band or, or artist to make? <laughs> Man, <laughs> I mean, that's a that's a, a really good question, actually. And I think that I I was one of those crazy people that just like was constantly like researching things and like trying to find things out about, you know, how to do this or how to be better at doing it. And I think that I've asked a lot of questions and like, it seems like really cliche, but like, 
I've had some of my like favorite artists or people that I look up to and admire. They just literally said like, if you can, if, or I'm sorry, if you go one day and you don't feel like you've done anything towards your band or like your artistry or like what you're trying to achieve, then you're fucking up. So if I had any advice is just like literally go hard every day, like find something that you can do, whether it's like create a piece of content or write a song or like, look up concepts for like something that has to do with your band. Like even if it's like marketing or anything, like do something every single day. Good stuff. Uh, let's say, let's say Xavier, give me a terrible mistake you made at some point in your musical career that you don't want a band that's just starting out to make. Um, I guess just don't, don't buy dumb shit because I, I feel like it's, and and really invest into like your so I guess if it's a, a a mistake to make don't buy like dumb shit I know it's like a a trivial thing but it's like when you want to take your career like very very serious to the next level it's like little trinkets and little like like me I ha I had like a pop addiction for a while and then when I look at my pops I'm like holy shit like that all of that could have bought me a really nice guitar or something. I feel like it's like definitely try to just monitor what you're doing with your time and expenses. Monitor what you're doing with your time and expenses. Like when you practice, instead of just playing your guitar, you might think that's practicing, but really you should be doing like 15 minutes of a specific skill set or like maybe you're practicing arpeggios. Practice that for 15 minutes, take a break, as opposed to just, if you're just jamming on your guitar, you're not really getting better. You're just playing the same shit. Do you still have all the pops? Oh, dude. Show me. Oh, yeah, he's got a lot. <laughs> <laughs> There's still time. There's still time to sell them. They're probably increased in value now. They buy, you know, a new amp or head or something. Who knows? That's the one thing that I'll say I was smart about. I li was that they're all like, they all pretty much have gone up. So I bought smart pops for the most part, but Hell it's yeah. definitely the hassle of selling them, you know. And I'm also lucky I have all the gear I really need, but it's just little things like that you don't really think about. And then like a year later, you're like, fuck. Well, yeah, but uh, guys, I appreciate you taking some time out of your day to hang out with me, hang out with JB, talk a little music, talk a little Mirror Lake band history talk about what's coming next looking forward to the the full body of work coming out very soon hopefully a single before the end of the year yes absolutely Possibly. excellent let's go yeah! please come back whenever you'd like don't be strangers we really appreciate it if it's okay with you i'll put this on youtube later tonight and uh you, you, absolutely you guys are awesome man have a fantastic day and we look forward to the new music we appreciate it oh yeah thanks for having us all right Thank you, Thank guys. You, Mirror Lake! Thank you. Yeah. Cheers, guys. I appreciate it.